The Alchon Huns, also known as the Alcono, Alzon, Alcon, Alcon, Alakana, and Walzon, were a nomadic people who established states in Central Asia and South Asia during the 4th and 6th centuries CE. They were first mentioned as being located in Paropamisus, and later expanded southeast, into the Punjab and central India, as far as Iran and Kasambi. The Alchon invasion of the Indian subcontinent contributed to the fall of the Gupta Empire. The invasion of India by the Huna peoples follows invasions of the subcontinent in the preceding centuries by the Yavana Indo-Greeks, the Saka Indo-Scythians, the Pallava Indo-Parthians, and the Kushana UG. The Alchon Empire was the third of four major Huna states established in Central and South Asia. The Alchon were preceded by the Kidarites and the Hephthalites, and succeeded by the Nezik Huns. The names of the Alchon kings are known from their extensive coinage, Buddhist accounts, and a number of commemorative inscriptions throughout the Indian subcontinent. Name To contemporaneous observers in India, the Alchon were one of the Huna peoples or Hunas, whose origins are controversial. A seal from Kasambi associated with Taramana, bears the title Hunaraja. Huna king. The Hunas appear to have been the peoples known in contemporaneous Iranian sources as Xwn, Xi'an and similar names, which were later romanized as Zionites or Chianites. The Hunas are often linked to the Huns that invaded Europe from Central Asia during the same period. Consequently, the word Hun has three slightly different meanings, depending on the context in which it is used. 1. The Huns of Europe. 2. Groups associated with the Huna people who invaded northern India. 3. A vague term for Hun-like people. The Alchon have also been labeled Huns, with essentially the second meaning, as well as elements of the third. The name, Alchon, generally given to them comes from the Bactrian legend of their early coinage, where they simply imitated Sasanian coins to which they added the name. Alcono. Alcono also Alcono in Bactrian script, a slight adaptation of the Greek script and the Tamga symbol of their clan. Several original coins such as those of Kingila also bear the mention Alcono, together with the Tamga symbol, philologically. Alcono. Alcono may be a combination of Al for Aryan and Zono for Huns, although this remains hypothetical. Another etymology could be Al, Turkish for Scarlet, and Zono for Huns, meaning Red Huns. Red being a symbol of the south among steppe nomads. Topic: History. Topic: Invasion of Bactria. Early confrontations between the Sasanian Empire of Shapur II with the nomadic hordes from Central Asia called the Chianites were described by Ammianus Marcellinus, he reports that in 356 CE, Shapur II was taking his winter quarters on his eastern borders, repelling the hostilities of the bordering tribes of the Chianites and the Euseni. Euseni is usually amended to Cusini, meaning the Kushans, finally making a treaty of alliance with the Chianites and the Jalani, the most warlike and indefatigable of all tribes, in 358 CE. After concluding this alliance, the Chianites probably of the Kidarites tribe under their king Grumbates accompanied Shapur II in the war against the Romans, especially at the siege of Amida in 359 CE. Victories of the Zionites during their campaigns in the eastern Caspian lands were also witnesses and described by Ammianus Marcellinus. Finally around 370 CE, still during the reign of Shapur II, the Sasanian Empire and the Kushano Sasanians completely lost the control of Bactria to these invaders from Central Asia, first the Kidarites, then the Hephthalites and the Alchon Huns, who would follow up with the invasion of India. The Alchon Huns emerged in Kapisa around 380, taking over Kabulistan from the Sasanian Persians, at the same time the Kidarites Red Huns ruled in Bactria and Gandhara. They are said to have taken control of Kabul in 388. The Alchon Huns initially issued anonymous coins based on Sasanian designs. Several types of these coins are known, usually minted in Bactria, using Sasanian coinage designs with busts imitating Sasanian kings Shapur II and Shapur III adding the Alchon Tamga and the name Alkono 
In Bactrian script, a slight adaptation of the Greek script which had been introduced in the region by the Greco-Bactrians in the 3rd century BCE on the obverse, and with attendance to a fire altar, a standard Sasanian design, on the reverse. Gandhara Around 430 King Kingula, the most notable Alchon ruler, and the first one to be named and represented on his coins, emerged and took control of the routes across the Hindu Kush from the Kitarites. As the Alchons took control, diplomatic missions were established in 457 with China. In 460, the Alchons conquered Taxila. Between 460 and 470 CE, as they took over Gandhara and the Punjab, they apparently undertook the mass destruction of Buddhist monasteries and stupas at Taxila, a high center of learning, which never recovered from the destruction. It is thought that the Kanishka Stupa, one of the most famous and tallest buildings in antiquity, was destroyed by them during their invasion of the area in the 460s CE. The rest of the 5th century marks a period of territorial expansion and eponymous kings, tegans, several of which appear to have overlapped and ruled jointly. Topic: <laughs> First Hunnic War, Central India. In the First Hunnic War 496 to 515, the Alchon reached their maximum territorial extent, with King Taramana pushing deep into Indian territory, reaching Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh in central India, and ultimately contributing to the downfall of the Gupta Empire. To the south, the Sanjali inscriptions indicate that Taramana penetrated at least as far as northern Gujarat, and possibly to the port of Barukacha. To the east, far into central India, the city of Kasambi, where seals with Toramana's name were found, was probably sacked by the Alkans in 497-500, before they moved to occupy Malwa. In particular, it is thought that the monastery of Goshitarama in Kasambi was destroyed by Taramana, as several of his seals were found there, one of them bearing the name Taramana impressed over the official seal of the monastery, and the other bearing the title Hunaraja, together with debris and arrowheads. Another seal, this time by Mahirakula, is reported from Kasambi. These territories may have been taken from Gupta Emperor Buddhagupta. Alternatively, they may have been captured during the rule of his successor Narasimhagupta. <laughs> First Battle of Iran 510 CE. A decisive battle occurred in Malwa, where a local Gupta ruler, probably a governor, named Banugupta was in charge. In the Banugupta Iran inscription, this local ruler reports that his army participated in a great battle in 510 CE at Iran, where it suffered severe casualties. Banugupta was probably vanquished by Taramana at this battle, so that the western Gupta province of Malwa fell into the hands of the Hunas. According to a 6th century CE Buddhist work, the Manjushri Mula Kalpa, Banugupta lost Malwa to the Shudra Taramana, who continued his conquest to Magadha, forcing Narasimhagupta Baladitya to make a retreat to Bengal. Taramana, possessed of great prowess and armies, then conquered the city of Tirtha in the Gauda country. Modern Bengal. Taramana is said to have crowned a new king in Benares, named Prakataditya, who is also presented as a son of Narasimha Gupta. Having conquered the territory of Malwa from the Guptas, Taramana was mentioned in a famous inscription in Iran, confirming his rule on the region. The Iran bore inscription of Taramana in Iran, Malwa, 540 km south of New Delhi, state of Madhya Pradesh of his first regnal year indicates that eastern Malwa was included in his dominion. The inscription is written under the neck of the boar, in eight lines of Sanskrit in the Brahmi script. The first line of the inscription, in which Taramana is introduced as Maharajadidaha the great king of kings, reads, In year one of the reign of the king of kings Sri Taramana, who rules the world with splendor and radiance. On his gold coins minted in India in the style of the Gupta emperors, Taramana presented himself confidently as quote quote, Avanapati Tarama no Vijitya Vasudam Devam Jayati. The Lord of the Earth, Taramana, having conquered the earth, wins heaven. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Defeat 515 CE. Taramana was finally defeated by local Indian rulers. 
The local ruler Banugupta is sometimes credited with vanquishing Taramana, as his 510 CE inscription in Iran, recording his participation in a great battle, is vague enough to allow for such an interpretation. The great battle in which Banagupta participated is not detailed, and it is impossible to know what it was, or which way it ended, and interpretations vary. Mukherjee and others consider, in view of the inscription as well as the Manjushri Mula Kalpa, that Banugupta was, on the contrary, vanquished by Taramana at the 510 CE Iran battle, so that the western Gupta province of Malwa fell into the hands of the Hunas at that point, so that Taramana could be mentioned in the Iran Bor inscription. As the ruler of the region, Taramana was finally vanquished with certainty by an Indian ruler of the Alakura dynasty of Malwa, after nearly 20 years in India. According to the Risthal stone slab inscription, discovered in 1983, King Prakashadharma defeated Taramana in 515 CE. The first Hunnic war thus ended with a Hunnic defeat, and Hunnic troops apparently retreated to the area of Punjab. The Manjushri Mula Kalpa simply states that Taramana died in Benares as he was returning westward from his battles with Narasimhagupta. Second Hunnic War, to Malwa and retreat The Second Hunnic War started in 520, when the Alchon king Mihirakula, son of Taramana, is recorded in his military encampment on the borders of the Jhelum by Chinese monk Song Yun. At the head of the Alchon, Mihirakula is then recorded in Gwalior, central India as ''Lord of the Earth'' in the Gwalior inscription of Mihirakula. According to some accounts, Mihirakula invaded India as far as the Gupta capital Pataliputra, which was sacked and left in ruins. Finally however, Mihirakula was defeated in 528 by an alliance of Indian principalities led by Yasodharman, the Alakura king of Malwa, in the Battle of Sandani in central India, which resulted in the loss of Alchon possessions in the Punjab and North India by 542. The Sandani inscription in Sandani, near Mansur, records the submission by force of the Hunas, and claims that Yasodharman had rescued the earth from rude and cruel kings, and that he had bent the head of Mihirakula. In a part of the Sandani inscription Yasodharman thus praises himself for having defeated King Mihirakula. He Yasodharman, to whose two feet respect was paid, with complimentary presents of the flowers from the lock of hair on the top of his head, by even that famous King Mihirakula, whose forehead was pained through being bent low down by the strength of his arm in the act of compelling obeisance. The Gupta Empire Emperor Narasimhagupta is also credited in helping repulse Mihirakula, after the latter had conquered most of India, according to the reports of Chinese monk Xuanzang. In a fanciful account, Xuanzang, who wrote a century later in 630 CE, reported that Mihirakula had conquered all India except for an island where the king of Magadha named Baladitya who could be Gupta ruler Narasimhagupta Baladitya took refuge, but that was finally captured by the Indian king. He later spared Mihirakula's life on the intercession of his mother, as she perceived the Hun ruler, as a man of remarkable beauty and vast wisdom. Mihirakula is then said to have returned to Kashmir to retake the throne. This ended the Second Hunnic War in c. 534, after an occupation which lasted nearly 15 years. <inaudible> Retreat to Kabulistan Around the middle of the 6th century CE, the Alkans withdrew to Kashmir and, pulling back from Punjab and Gandhara, moved west across the Khyber Pass where they resettled in Kabulistan. There, their coinage suggests that they merged with the Nezik, as coins in Nezik style now bear the Alchon Tamga mark. During the 7th century, continued military encounters are reported between the Hunas and the northern Indian states which followed the disappearance of the Gupta Empire. For example, Prabhakaravardhana, the Vardhana dynasty king of Thanissar in northern India and father of Harsha, is reported to have been a lion to the Huna deer, a burning fever to the king of the Indus land. The Alkans in India declined rapidly around the same time that the Hephthalites, a related group to the north, were defeated by an alliance between the Sasanians and the western Turkic Khaganate. Eventually, the Nezik Alkans were replaced by the Turk Shahi dynasty. Topic. Religion and ethics 
The four Alchon kings Kingila, Taramana, Javuka, and Mahama are mentioned as donors to a Buddhist stupa in the Talagan Copper Scroll inscription dated to 492 or 493 CE, that is, at a time before the Hunnic Wars in India started. This corresponds to a time when the Alkans had recently taken control of Taxila around 460 CE, at the centre of the Buddhist regions of northwestern India. Topic. Persecution of Buddhism Later however, the attitude of the Alkans towards Buddhism is reported to have been negative. Mahirakula in particular is remembered by Buddhist sources to have been a terrible persecutor of their religion in Gandhara in northern Pakistan. During his reign, over a thousand Buddhist monasteries throughout Gandhara are said to have been destroyed. In particular the Chinese monk Xuanzang, writing in 630 CE, explained that Mahirakula ordered the destruction of Buddhism and the expulsion of monks. Indeed, the Buddhist art of Gandhara, in particular Greco-Buddhist art, becomes essentially extinct around that period. When Xuanzang visited northwestern Indian in c. 630 CE, he reported that Buddhism had drastically declined, and that most of the monasteries were deserted and left in ruins. Although the Guptas were traditionally a Brahmanical dynasty, around the period of the invasions of the Alchon, the Gupta rulers had apparently been favoring Buddhism. Narasimhagupta Baladitya, Mahirakula's supposed nemesis, was, according to contemporary writer Paramartha, brought up under the influence of the Mahayanist philosopher, Vasubandhu. He built a Sangarama at Nalanda and a 300 feet 91 meters high vihara with a Buddha statue within which, according to Xuanzang, resembled the great vihara built under the Bodhi tree. According to the Manjushrimula Kalpa c. 800 CE, King Narasimsegupta became a Buddhist monk, and left the world through meditation dhyana. The Chinese monk Xuanzang also noted that Narasimhagupta Baladitya's son, Vajra, who commissioned a Sangarama as well possessed a heart firm in faith." The 12th-century Kashmiri historian Kalhana also painted a dreary picture of Mahirakula's cruelty, as well as his persecution of the Buddhist faith. In him, the northern region brought forth, as it were, another god of death, bent in rivalry to surpass Yama, the god of death residing in the southern regions. People knew of his approach by noticing the vultures, crows and other birds flying ahead eager to feed on those who were being slain within his army's reach. The royal Vetala demon was day and night surrounded by thousands of murdered human beings, even in his pleasure houses. This terrible enemy of mankind had no pity for children, no compassion for women, no respect for the aged. Topic. Shivaism and Sun Cult The Alkans are generally described as sun worshippers, a traditional cult of steppe nomads, due to the appearance of sun symbols on some of their coins, combined to the probable influence they received from the cult of Surya in India. Mahirakula is also said to have been an ardent worshipper of Shiva, although he may have been selectively attracted by the destructive powers of the Indian deity. Topic: <laughs> Consequences on India. The Alchon invasions, although only spanning a few decades, had long-term effects on India, and in a sense brought an end to the Middle Kingdoms of India. Soon after the invasions, the Gupta Empire, already weakened by these invasions and the rise of local rulers, ended as well. Following the invasions, northern India was left in disarray, with numerous smaller Indian powers emerging after the crumbling of the Guptas. The Huna invasions are said to have seriously damaged India's trade with Europe and Central Asia, in particular, Indo Roman trade relations, which the Gupta Empire had greatly benefited from. The Guptas had been exporting numerous luxury products such as silk, leather goods, fur, iron products, ivory, pearl, and pepper from centres such as Nasik, Pathan, Pataliputra, and Benares. The Huna invasion probably disrupted these trade relations and the tax revenues that came with them. Furthermore, Indian urban culture was left in decline, and Buddhism, gravely weakened by the destruction of monasteries and the killing of monks, started to collapse. Great centers of learning were destroyed, such as the city of Taxila, bringing cultural regression. During their rule of 60 years, the Alkans are said to have altered the hierarchy of ruling families and the Indian caste system. On the artistic side however, the Alchon Huns may have played a role, just like the western satraps centuries before them, in helping spread the art of Gandhara to the western Deccan region. Topic. 
Topic: Sources. Ancient sources refer to the Alkans and associated groups ambiguously with various names, such as Huna in Indian texts, and Zeonites in Greek texts. Xuanzang chronicled some of the later history of the Alkans. Modern archaeology has provided valuable insights into the history of the Alkans. The most significant cataloging of the Alchon dynasty came in 1967 with Robert Goebel's analysis of the coinage of the Iranian Huns. This work documented the names of a partial chronology of Alchon kings, beginning with Kingila. In 2012, the Kunsthistorisches Museum completed a reanalysis of previous finds together with a large number of new coins that appeared on the antiquities market during the Second Afghan Civil War, redefining the timeline and narrative of the Alkans and related peoples. Taligan Copper Scroll A significant contribution to our understanding of Alchon history came in 2006 when Gudrun Melzer and Lor Sander published their finding of the Taligan Copper Scroll, also known as the Shoyan Copper Scroll, dated to 492 or 493, that mentions the four Alchon kings Kingila, Taramana, Javuka, and Mahama who was reigning at the time as donors to a Buddhist reliquary stupa. Tegins The rulers of the Alkans practiced skull deformation, as evidenced from their coins, a practice shared with the Huns that migrated into Europe. The names of the first Alchon rulers do not survive. Starting from 430 CE, names of Alchon kings, assuming the title, Tegan, survive on coins and religious inscriptions. Anonymous kings 400 CE Kingila C. 430-490 CE. Javuka Zabocho C. Mid 5th Early 6th CE. Muhammad C. 461-493 CE. Lakana Udayaditya C. 490s CE. Adaman Taramana C. 490-515 CE. Mahirakula C. 515-540 CE Taramana II C. 530-570 CE Narana – Narendra C. 570-600 CE Coinage Early Bactrian coinage based on Sasanian designs The earliest Alchon Hun coins were based on Sasanian designs, often with the simple addition of the Alchon Tamga and a mention of Alchon or Alkan. Various coins minted in Bactria and based on a Sasanian designs are known, often with busts imitating Sasanian kings Shapur II and Shapur III with attendance to a fire altar on the reverse. It is thought that the Sasanids lost control of Bactria to the Kitarites during the reign of Shapur II circa 370 CE, followed by the Hephthalites, and subsequently by the Alchon. Later original coinage soon, however, the coinage of the Alchon becomes original and differs from predecessors in that it is devoid of Iranian Sasanian symbolism. The rulers are depicted with elongated skulls, apparently a result of artificial cranial deformation. After their invasion of India, the coins of the Alchon were numerous and varied, as they issued copper, silver, and gold coins, sometimes roughly following the Gupta pattern. The Alchon Empire in India must have been quite significant and rich, with the ability to issue a significant volume of gold coins. <laughs> Notes <laughs>